All right, welcome to video six. Video six for unit four is all about watersheds. Watersheds are important. Um, so this is just a quick example of our own watershed, the Great Basin watershed. The reason it's called the Great Basin is because it's a huge basin and it's a huge watershed. A lot of water exists, um, a lot of paths for that water to exist. Now, how do you define a watershed? Well, it's defined by its area, length, so slope, soil, vegetation type, and the divides. And we'll talk about each of those in detail. So the area is just the volume of water that can be generated from a rainfall. So in a basin, in this watershed, for instance, this would be the basin. So that would be the area. We can base it off of the amount of precipitation, how much water comes in, and it reflects the volume total because if it has a larger area, it's going to be able to get more rainfall. Whereas if it has a smaller area, there's going to be less rainfall. Uh, length you can measure in different ways. Typically it's considered the principal flow path. So if this was our watershed, we could measure it the total length here, which is number one. We could also do the number two, which is from here to the farthest point away from the, set, the very point of the water entering. You could also do it from the point of water entering to the point of water exiting. So these are all ways that you can measure the length um, of a watershed where this is the main stream that runs through it. The slope also affects the watershed because it'll affect the momentum of the runoff. So that's like the velocity of the water as it moves down. For instance, if you notice in this example, the water is going to move from the higher elevation down into this stream in the valley. If these slopes are higher, meaning like this right here, very steep slopes, that water is going to run down faster, which is going to cause more erosion, whereas a uh, less steep slope is going to cause slower erosion. And then you might also have watersheds that are very vast like this, where you get a very clear amount of erosion closer to the water, and that erosion is bringing material from uh, on top of the mountains and bringing it down. Uh, we will talk about soil when we get to the types of watersheds. So the vegetation is another one. It adds the organic material to the soil. This is what can really be affected by, or this can really affect a watershed because the more vegetation, the more the water is stopped in its erosion. So tr the roots can prevent erosion. A canopy can keep the water cool, which pr uh, prevents it from being uh, evaporated. It can also reduce the force of the rain and the velocity of the wind. The plant cover can also protect um, organisms and provide food and then if you guys recall we've learned this on our field trips but riparian zones are buffers th these buffer the waters from runoff so a riparian zone here for example these are the areas right next to the water that usually are different types of plants and these types of plants actually help to prevent more and more uh, erosion so the divides are also a big part. These are just the peaks and the ridge lines um, with a line connecting highest points. So on a, like a topographic map, we would look at these peaks. So this would say that, you know, a drop of water that hits the very top of this mountain right here, one drop a little bit further over would go down into this watershed while a drop a little bit further to the left would go into a different watershed. And so these divide watersheds because of their geography. So there's types, the types of watersheds we're going to look at are, first one is agricultural. So these are barren fields. The soil is not very compact, or is, the soil is very compacted, so there's not as much infiltration. There's not as many streams. Typically, we apply fertilizers and manure, which can change the structure of the watershed itself. An urban watershed usually prevents the natural water flow because we put roads and houses and parking lots um, so it will change the ability for water to run off, which can create floods. So this just gives you an idea, you know, pre-development water is able to kind of be infiltrated. There's some interception by the canopy. There's transpiration and evaporation. There's surface runoff, whereas post-development, it's much harder because there's more developed land. There's not as much protecting the ground, so the water will have a higher amount of surface runoff because the water has to go somewhere. 
There are mountainous watersheds that have steep gradients. The soil is typically more rocky, so it doesn't allow as much water in, which means it has a lot uh, lower infiltration and a high amount of runoff. This is, you know, us, right? We get a lot of when the when the when the um, when the winter uh, when the winter snow melts, we typically see a high amount of runoff. You can see that in the Truckee River, and then downstream areas are also vulnerable to flooding, as you can see in the Truckee River. Uh, forests, water feds typically have a lot of evapotranspiration, meaning uh, water leaving the plants through transpiration and being evaporated. It allows for a higher amount of infiltration, so less water is able to run off. More water is taken in to the soil. Desert uh, watersheds are typically sandy and porous, so they allow they, they take a lot of that water in, but they don't have a whole lot of water coming in the first place. So there's no stream development development because of the low amount of rainfall. Um, and the groundwater does not typically recharge as quickly because of the fact that there is just less water available. Coastal watersheds typically have high rainfall. There's no real control um, in, for the channels, so you get flooding. The water table is very high because there's more water, so the water doesn't go as deep into the surface. And you can also get saltwater intrusion into that watershed which causes the fresh water to no longer be fresh. These are also known as estuaries. Wetlands are typically a little bit different because water is not the limiting factor. They have a lot of rainfall, they have a lot of runoff, and most of the water is taken away through evaporation, but they do have huge amounts of water. So this is just a graph to show you all the different um, mixing types of water and the types of watersheds that can exist. We have an urban area, an agricultural area, uh, tributary rivers that fall bringing that water down. The headwaters exist way up top. This would be a reservoir like a lake, like Lake Tahoe for instance, and that water eventually can stream back out into the bay, into the estuary through a river. So that is the end of our video on watersheds. The next video is going to be all about soil radiation and sun solar radiation is what it should say. <laughs> Not sure what soil radiation is. So soil solar radiation and Earth's seasons.